friends, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to create this mini album flip book. We're using the Echo Park Little Lumberjack Christmas collection. And so this is gonna be a great last minute gift or maybe even a document December album if you're making it for yourself. Before I get into that, I did want to say I'm so overwhelmed by all the sweet, kind comments that you all left me for my 2019 document in December flip through. It was so heartwarming to see all the more personal messages. I always love all the comments, but this one, struck me particularly sweet and kind and I was so excited I even told Tech Hubby I said come look at all these nice comments and so I thought that was really sweet and I do uh, get a little nervous when I do vlog style because I think that I talk too much or get weird or whatever and so I think that it is very sweet that you guys seem to enjoy the more personal vlog chatty style video so I'll definitely be bringing more of those in the future and in fact during that video I discussed some choices that I would be making for 2020. I did make a choice um, and you guys did seem to be interested in seeing some process videos for the 2020 album. So instead of just telling you, I think I'll leave it as a surprise, but I did get the cover finished and then I have all the uh, supplies ready to decorate the cover and string it. So I will probably be bringing that to you on Tuesday. So um, I just have to um, get it strung and then I can show you how I'm going to decorate the cover. And I know that some of you will be surprised and some of you will not, but um, anyway, that will be coming next week. So thanks again for all your support for that and enthusiasm to see process videos of the uh, documenting December project. But now it's time to create this mini, so let's get into this and we'll make it together. So here is that little lumberjack collection. That's from Echo Park. And I think what they did was really smart. So they have a very nice selection of specifically holiday themed pattern papers. And then also quite a few cut aparts. They have three by four size and then four by four and four by six. So there's a lot of options depending on what project you're working on. And the um, pattern papers are really sweet. Some of them, like I said, are meant to be very Christmassy. But look at this one. So this one has a moose and trees. And there's also wood grain. And here are some of those uh, larger cut aparts. And even more. On the back side of these, there are some B-side additional patterns. So that makes it so that you have more options. And then, of course, this is obviously Christmas because it has the stocking. But what they did that was so clever is they took all of these pattern papers and created a cut apart sheet that would coordinate that is not specifically holiday. None of these are um, theme specific for a holiday season, like a bear would be cute. This one says happy camper. So if you go camping, that would be great. We go camping, mostly we go RVing. So I could definitely see using this whole collection, stretching that into um, a whole different season. So good on you, Echo Park. That was really smart thinking and we'll get a lot more use out of this collection. So I just bought a variety of the pattern papers and the cutter parts. I didn't get any of the uh, ephemera pieces or any of the stickers like that. So I was working with this um, just as is. I've made this book base quite a few times before, but it's pretty easy. So I'll just cover it again here. I'm working with 110 pound paper. That's very important. You want it to be very sturdy. And so I have two pieces that are six inches high. My first piece is going to be eight and three quarter. I scored it at four and then again at four and three quarters. So I'm gonna have a book that is four inches wide and then the spine on the left is three quarters. The same thing here, but only half an inch in the middle. So four inches, half an inch and four inches. And then I have added my adhesive tape to the back of this page and I'll just join them here very easy to get these lined up and attached this way. So now you've got your flip book started and we can go ahead and start 
on the pages. Let's go ahead and put the back on first because it's easier to do that now before all of the paper layers get added. So I'm just using the same black cardstock throughout. I picked that specifically because I think it uh, coordinates better with the plaids and I didn't have to try to match the red of that, which would be much more difficult. So this is just going to be the back. You'll see that when it's closed up and it's easier to do that now. For the first page that you see when you open the book, it is a pocket page. So I've gone ahead and chosen my pattern paper and I've cut my pocket so that it would wrap around the outside of this paper. That way it gives me more room inside to tuck in some tags and some uh, flat keepsakes and mementos. So I'm just wrapping that paper around. You see I had it notched in the corner so that I'm not adding extra bulk. And I've got that sealed up now so I can add this to my solid cardstock border and then attach this to the book. And I think this also helps to keep um, the pocket more secure. When you get it loaded up, it is not going to come apart at the seam. So here is my black cardstock, and I'll just flip this over here. I think it's easier to line it up at the top, but um, miss make sure that you have an even amount of that border showing. I cut a complementary pattern here of that wood grain, and that's just going to cover most of this pocket, but I do want to leave just a little strip of that black cardstock showing on top. And let's go ahead and put this in the book now. So here is the first layer that will be inside. You can imagine how nice and thick and sturdy this will be once you have all of the pocket uh, pages and all of the inserts included. So you are going to have a very sturdy book. And because of the size, it definitely is a very good use of your pattern papers if you work in a 12 by 12 because you're not going to get very much off cut waste. So I'm just lining that up here. And like I said, that will be the first pocket on the left. What I want to do now is make a layered tag to put in there. Lately I have been decorating the top of the tags with my cardstock and collection paper and leaving the back um, just the plain solid white of the tag and I think that helps to provide places for journaling to be added so you're not trying to write over the top of pattern papers. So here's one of those patterns that would be perfect for Christmas, but also one of those carryover patterns. And I don't know that this reads Christmas to um, the other journal card cut aparts because it just has a moose and some trees on it. So this will be a great place to add some pictures and then you can put your journaling on the back. So tuck this in here and then top it with one of the cut aparts. So this one is one from Holiday and this is just a nice place to clip things on or put a picture on the back and it just increases the amount of space that you get in this mini. My next page is going to be seen right alongside, so let's do that one next. For this set of pages, it's going to be a similar layout but a different orientation. So I've just got my collection paper and then my pocket, but this time I'm going to add it coming from the side. And so it's just the same process of wrapping your cardstock around with the notched edges and then adhering that to the book. So here is another one of those patterns I mentioned before. Definitely do not consider swimming fish to be Christmas, but it definitely would work for an outdoorsy sort of um, travel or notebook or mini album if that's what you're making or even just regular layouts. So this is a cute pattern. It's quite small, so you would be able to see a lot of that uh, even if you layered things on top. So let's add that to the page. And like I said, this pocket is going to run on the other orientation. So that will be a little more interesting. I'm still gonna use that same pocket topper though because I thought that wood grain and the plaid looked very smart together. So I'll just line that up here. 
making sure that I've got my strip of cardstock border and then I'll add that to the book as well. I've already prepared my tags so I can just tuck those in. So here is my side pocket. This is the same insert that I did for the other page and then an additional journaling card to tuck in there. Okay, for my two pages that are inside, these are going to be uh, top folding full page tips. So if you want to add more pages uh, to your book, you can easily increase the amount of space you put on your spine. So if you want to do, um, I've just recently done a book that had a flip this way and then a flip that way as well. I put an inch on the spine and then three quarters and that definitely left me plenty of room to accommodate all of those paper layers and keep the book from getting out of shape. So let's do um, the next pocket here. And I've already prepared that. It's similar to the one on this side. And I just like how they all coordinate and match because they are all seen together. So this page is just like the one on the left, but I'm going to add it over here. So as I mentioned, this is a full page tip up. And so what I did was I took an additional piece of 65 pound weight cardstock and I cut that to be four and then the full width of the 12 inches so that I could fold it just like a top folding greeting card. And then I just went ahead and filled in the middle with some companion paper from the collection. So all I have to do is line up my corners all the way to the edge because remember our book is going to be four by six. So this is going right on the side and this really increases the real estate that you can use to finish these books. And you can definitely even get some larger pictures in here because you've got more of these surface areas to include them. So here is a full tip. And then like I said, if you leave yourself a little bit more room, you can have a tip this way and then a tip this way as well. So here is my center portion. I'm using the same pattern for all of these inside pages because they show together. And I just think it looks a little bit nicer and more coordinated that way. So here's another of those page tips. And so I'm gonna top it with my pattern paper that matches the two pages on the outside, then add it to the book. This one's going right in the center. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to top this one with another uh, top folding portion. And I've got a, another one of the collection papers on the inside. I think I want to try and center that as best I can. And then here is another one of the three by four cut aparts and I've just used that same black border so that you will be able to tell the difference between the card and the card stock for the tip up. I love this plaid Christmas tree. It's just so festive. Okay, so here is this one. It opens here and then each of these pages opens up here to have a full size. Here is the close. And let's go ahead and work on the cover. This is the best time to add trim if you're going to use that as a closure, as I like to do. So I'll just measure out what I think I need to tie a nice bow and then attach it just temporarily here, tacking it in place. And I'll take off that excess. Okay, now I think it would be easier if I opened this book and worked with it a little bit more flat. So I have more of that plaid. Remember all the parts that show at the same time, I like to have the same pattern. So here's more of this plaid and then another pattern from that collection. So this is going to be a layered piece that's dimensional. I put that up on foam. I cut this from a um, a banner shaped die that had a stitching effect so that gives it a little bit of extra detail and I'm going to 
follow my rule with my double-sided adhesive and then add a second adhesive, the Tombow will help to hold it in place. So I'm just going to add that now. Okay, so here is that banner shape added and then I'm going to top it with this small doily. And then I took a punch and cut out one of the journal cards so that I could have it be a better scale for the cover of this book. Here's the arrangement that I've prepared. It's uh, very compact, has a few nice large little pretty flowers here, some die cut holly, a couple of little glittery foliage pieces, and then I switched my usual uh, ivory burlap string for natural so that it would match that. So this still comes from really reasonable ribbon and this beautiful bold check does as well. So I'm going to add that right here at the bottom. Here are some sweet little holiday charms. They're both in reindeer. I thought that worked very well with the woodland kind of style. And I'm going to hold that here and add my glue just to remove that excess string then top it with this small vintage button and that's all. So I think this is a pretty cute little Christmas mini album. All you have to do is fill it up with your favorite holiday pictures and memories. I think it would also make a really good gift card holder if you are um, gifting for the holiday and you have more than one recipient you could tuck their gift cards in each of these pockets and then give this as a gift and a card. So that is all for our Joy Christmas mini album flipbook. If you enjoyed this project, make sure you give me a like and leave me a comment. You can find links in the description for this collection as well as links to really reasonable ribbon for the trims and all our social media sites. If you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you'll be alerted every time we add new content. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!